Local stories, local people. We're taking you inside Western Mass News. It's the Even Better Western Mass Podcast with Dave Madsen. Welcome to this week's edition of the Even Better Western Mass Podcast. Hope you had a happy and a safe new year. We certainly uh, want to say goodbye to 2020 and a big hello to 2021. We look forward to much better things in the year ahead. But of course, we know we've got a long way to go before we're back to any semblance of normal. We're going to start off the new year with a visit from an old friend and longtime Western Mass Radio personality, Dennis Lee. Dennis came onto the Western Mass Radio scene in the late 60s at WHYN Radio, a powerhouse in those days. If you listen to any radio station, you listen to WHYN. Dennis also spent many years as the morning personality at WHMP in Northampton, a job I also enjoyed for a number of years. Here's my conversation with Mrs. Lee's son, Dennis. Hello there, Dave. Nice to see you always. Always good to see you, Dennis. Uh, you know, it, it, actually, we're taping this in December on the first snowstorm of the big fo- snowstorm of the year. So it's a good night to do this. It is. Well, it's always good to see you. We, uh, run, over the years, have run over and with it, uh, each other doing different things, sometimes at, at, at funerals and sometimes at uh, fireworks, but we manage to stay in touch and uh, it's always enjoyable. So thanks for the opportunity to uh, get. Isn't it nice though, on a, on a morning like this, that because uh, I remember my days at HMP too, and I never mind driving in because there was nobody on the road, yeah. um, but not having to drive into work on days like today. Oh yeah, to me, uh, it's, that's about New England. I mean, driving in New England is terrible, you know, and I had a deal when I worked at HMP uh, for a while with the fire department. If it was really bad and I got snowed in, they would, they would pick me up. Nice. And, uh, you know, uh, of course now with TV, Dave, I think, I don't even know if people are paying attention to the radio as much as they just go to the websites on their computer and they see the cancellation. So I don't know if it's, is is as important i hate to say it but i don't know if it's as important as it was when when you and i were doing the thing well back in the day i mean that's that's the only place where you got got the cancellations i mean i yeah. can i can remember and you did the same thing it's like you would you know there'd be a snowstorm and the morning would kind of get blown up because all you're doing is cancellations and it was vital people that's what people did you know uh I I was just thinking in anticipation of gabbing with you, you know, uh, you did it on radio and TV and and for myself, uh, radio, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty intimate. You're coming into people's houses and they, they don't know you personally on some cases, but they feel like they do. And, and I, I thought I was thinking about this this afternoon. Uh, people, uh, when I would run into people when I was on the air and I was on, on the morning show for like 23 years on HMP and uh, people would say hi to me in the street, but they, they wouldn't say hi like they would to just uh, a stranger or a neighbor. They'd say hi to you like they know you. And they'd say, hi, Dennis. And I always say, well, how do I know you? They'd say, well, no, I don't know you, but I listen every morning and, and, and you talk about your mom or your mom's dog and, 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 and they feel like that, which is great. I mean, it's a nice yep. feeling, uh, but you and I were talking off the air. I don't think either one of us thought that it was that it was serious, but we, we didn't take it overly, overly so. So it wasn't a, it wasn't like, oh, it was a big deal because we're on the radio. This yeah. is what we did. And you were on TV and, and you try to be good at it and you hope people like you, but you don't know because you don't know what they're thinking when they look at you. But, you know, that was the difference with small town radio. I mean, you remember, remember the days. I mean, we'll talk about this in a little bit, but, you know, when you were at WHYN, I mean, that was the powerhouse. But yep. around here in that time, I mean, you had WARE, you had uh, WACE, you had uh, WTXL, uh, WREB, WHMP, HAI, but they were all community stations and, yeah. uh, you know, and, and owned by, you know, small owners. And yeah, the uh, roses when I first went there for them, I, I, I thought the world of Charlie DeRose. Yeah, uh, still do. I haven't seen him recently, but uh, uh, no, I can remember the first time I heard HMP. Um, I was thinking of, of, of working there after I had, had left Springfield and I put the radio on and uh, the incredible, the one and only Ron Hall was on. And anybody that when I say that, they'll smile because there's nobody like. Ron Hall on the planet. I mean, nope. there just wasn't, and there isn't. I haven't talked to him in, in a while, but he was a very special guy. Lived and died to be on the radio, by the way. Yeah. I mean, I think he, that was his whole life. 
And uh, but they had back then they had they had about five or six college kids who would be at town meetings. And if you put the radio on, you heard something uh, from from anything that was going on. Yeah. Now it's not that way. Now they've cut back in that over over the years. So is HYN. HYN, you know, used to have a six man news staff, you know, and, and twenty four or twelve mil. Half a day anyway. But at least and, in your day too at HYN, you also had, you were combined with TV. So it was, yep, yep. It, it so was kind it was of mix every, and match, you know? Yep. And, you know, speaking of that, I, I thought of this this afternoon. Well, you know, all these folks, of course, Ray Herschel, I went to Emerson College with Ray. He was, he, he was my newsman on the college radio station. And then when I came to Springfield, he was my newsman for a short time before he went to TV. And I'll tell you one other quick story. We were in a fraternity in Boston, and it seems silly now pledging for fraternity and doing stupid stuff. But we had to get the signature of the all-night disc jockey. We, we had to, Ray was from Chicopee. We had to hitchhike to uh, HYN in the middle of the night, get the signature of the all-night disc jockey. I think it was little Davey, I'm not sure. Well, years later, I ended up being the all-night disc jockey in the same building. And 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 when when Ray retired, I sent him a, a, a note and I said, we never knew when we were walking across the Chicopee Bridge or whatever it was at three in the morning that where our career or where it was going to go. Yeah. You ended up and I, I you know, and he, he worked very successfully. Ray's just as you are just one of the really good guys we know. And it's as simple as that, you know, Ray's a good guy and ethical and smart and nice to know. Oh yeah. Just, and, you know, and, you know we're always with Ray, it was Ray was the same on TV as off TV. And well, I that's it. You're, that's, you're that's right. why he was successful. But I, you know, I, I, when you look at your success, it was the same thing. It's like, well, you're the same on the air as you were off the air. And, uh, uh, and I think that's that, that, and that means a lot to people. I mean, cause you, you know, you've been in this business long enough where there are people who they're two different people. Yeah, yeah. And we've worked, we've worked with some different people through yeah, the year. Yeah. That's true. But I have to say, you probably would say this, though. I worked with an awful lot of wonderful people. I'm yes. not talking about broadcasters now. I'm talking yep. about people. Well, I could just mention Jack O'Neill, yep. right? God uh, bless Jack. Yeah, You know, Jack, you know, uh, uh, Fred King, who we recently yep. lost, longtime friend, Um uh, uh, just, just a great guy, fun guy to be around. Larry Kruger worked during the HYN days, had a big uh, career in Providence, in Providence, and, yeah, and and just you know a lot of O'Brady, oh, Bob Kennedy, Bob yep. O'Brady oh, was his is their name, and uh, we played when you worked at HMP, we played you guys in softball. We did a thousand years ago. We were uh, all you, young, right? Young, <laughs> yeah. Now we can't lift up a bat. You know, <laughs> you Massey was was in that crew, right? Yep. Gary Miller, Gary Miller, yeah. So and we've we, known a lot of the same guys, but but I mean, the the point is, they really good people. Okay, yeah. forget how somebody was on the radio. Some were good, some were better than others. You know, but 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 they were nice people to be around, and you laughed, and you smiled, and you felt good, and it, it was pretty special. Well, it was different back then too. I mean, we were all closer. I mean, did you always want to work in radio? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think it was my toilet training or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where I, where I went wrong with that. You know, I, I, you know, I don't know where it started. I, I, I can't really tell. I had to do a, my dad and I used to dress up as clowns for grand openings in Connecticut. He had a little advertising agency and we did a telethon for uh, United Cerebral Palsy and they had a PA system and they handed me a microphone. And I was stopping cars and I was, I was in junior high and I was getting people to pull over to give money. And I don't know if that's when something went off in the back of my head, in the back of my head. I don't know if that, that's when it was, but it was just something. And I've always been, the power of radio and TV, Dave, is amazing. It really, yeah. it really is. I don't mean in a big sense, like, uh, oh, it's a big deal to be on the radio or TV. I don't mean it that way. But, you know, you never know who's listening. You yeah. just never know. You go and you, you, you're you not thinking every day, well, I'm going on TV. You're going in to do a job, right? You hope you keep the boss happy or Durham Caldwell happy or whoever yeah. it was, right? Durham's another great guy who I always liked and respected. Uh, uh, he just he just was a good guy and uh, taught a lot of things to a lot of people. 
He did. I mean, Dur- Dur- Durham was tough, but I tell you something, you learned from that man. And, yeah. you know, he was, uh, but a heart of gold. Yeah. Well, I always, I always said about Durham and, and I was only around them peripherally. Uh, I, I, I would always heard from people, everybody that worked for him, they said he was a tough guy, but he was fair. Fair. Yeah. And I ran into his daughter uh, at Ray Herschel's uh, retirement party, one of his retirement parties, and I'd never met her before. And I told her that I said I always heard from people that he was. And I, if you, if somebody says you're tough but fair, that's not a bad way to live your life, maybe. No, and you, and you think uh, Derm and his and his wife Jean. Jean was a writer for the Boston Globe, so I mean, yeah, talk yeah. about a family with news chops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've known now, a lot of good people, and and you know, like you started to say before, we were all this about the same age at that time. And so we, we laughed together, told bad jokes together, had drinks together. It was just, it was, it was that time, you know, and yeah. it was a very, a very special time. And, and I, uh, you know, we all have good memories and bad memories and uh, mixed in somewhere, but I have an awful lot of good memories of just people that I, I'm glad I knew. Okay? Yeah. Or now, what was, what was your first radio job? It was in a place called Berlin, New Hampshire which is not the end of the world, Dave, but you can see it from there, right? <laughs> I mean, it was an, an hour from the Canadian border, and uh, that was my first radio job. Then I worked up in uh, uh, New Hampshire at a couple stations, and I came to Springfield in 1968 on June 5th. It was the day that Robert Kennedy was, was shot. That's how I remember it. But so, so you you started about around the same time at HYN as Ray did because Ray started right out of I think right almost right out of Emerson. Yeah, he he started first and then and then I came, and uh, I can remember going over. His mom invited me over f- for lunch, and I remember meeting his folks, and it was just it was just nice, you know. And 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 uh, like you say, a lot of nice people. And uh, I, I I try to think if I'm in a rotten mood these days with the you know, the virus and everything else that's going on, the politics, crazy stuff. I, I try to think of some of those people once in a while and just smile. You know, I think at Jack O'Neill, we we yeah. were through the wars together and there's a million Jack O'Neill and Dennis stories. And <laughs> I can talk about Jack for a day and a half, you know. There was nobody uh, like Jack. No, Jack Jack was, uh, Jack was a, a, a special guy. And uh, we did, he's kind enough to ask me to do a couple of uh, charity telethons with him. And uh, yeah, you did the UCP telethon yeah, for years. I, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not a TV guy. You know, you know, the old radio line to get a good face for radio, right? That's, <laughs> that's the old line, right? That's everybody uses that. But Jack, uh, Jack asked me to do it. And I was supposed to be with him all night, you know, and host all night on this, on channel 40. And then in the morning, the producer from New York who was, was sent to the station to help out said, you guys are really good together. Can you come back during the day? And I said, geez, I don't know. I don't know anything about TV. Matter of fact, but I didn't like doing TV day because I'll tell you why. I only did it like one day a year and I felt like you couldn't get good at it. You know, you, 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 I mean, there's no way you, no, you Dennis, know. I did it for 40 years and I'm still working on well, it. That's what <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you, I point well taken, but, but, but you had a better chance of looking good most days than I did one day a year. So I found that a little frustrating, but it was fun working with Ray and let's see who who can we mention uh, from STCC Andy, Andy Shabelli, Shabelli who yep. was Kathy was a, who was a great guy he did a, I got to tell you this and Ray knows this story I guess I can tell you this he he Andy would walk by a mirror or the camera and he'd start combing his hair and he'd say who am I of course it was Ray and he would do an impression <laughs> of Ray always combing his hair and Ray would like laugh and giggle. And, you know, but once again, he was a really good guy and a smart guy and a really good guy to know. Well, I think, too, all involved in the community. Let's, let's talk about those early days at HYN. I mean, you know, gr- growing up here, uh, that if you listen to rock and roll radio in, in the 60s, it was WHYN. I mean, this is the heyday of AM radio. What was yeah. it like when you walked in there? I mean, that, that, that had to be. I mean, that place was crazy. I, I've heard stories. Well, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think what my, well, my impression was, you know, it was a big deal for me. You know, I didn't know I was going to get this job and I got the job and I walked in them and, and their studio was actually, I mean, a really nice studio and comfortable and, you know, and it was classy. And of course I was an impressionable kid and uh, uh, T 
TV was down the hall and that was a big deal to me, you know, cause I'd never been around TV. So, but they had some really good people that worked on TV. I mean, as people, I'm not even talking about talent now. Once again, I, I just get a bigger kick out of thinking about the people that I knew and the people I laughed with and that I knew, you know, uh, uh, well, Deegan, Deegan was there, right? John Deegan, John Deegan, you know, uh, and you know, there's a character, right? You yeah. look in a dictionary under character, you see John's picture. That's just the way it is. Right. And there were a lot of people like that. And the engineers, th this is kind of like in stuff folks, but uh, um, you know, a lot of engineers, if you ask them what time it is, they want to build you a clock you know, and you don't speak English, but the, <laughs> the, the, the engineers at, at HYN in 40 were just regular guys that knew how to fix anything. But if you said, if you said this switch doesn't work, they'd say, okay, we'll fix it. And they were good guys. And they weren't, they weren't, you know, they weren't what you would call nerds. You know, they just were just really good guys. And, and, and it, once again, more nice people that you knew and you felt good about. I mean, you guys were cooking back then. I mean, you think about the lineup. You now, did you you started doing overnights, right? Yeah, no, I actually no? I did I did work ten to two and then, yeah. then all night. And uh, you know, I I was not one of the the, the big Kahuna's. You know, uh, Brady was. We worked together in New Hampshire, as a matter of fact. Really, uh, Brady, yeah. Uh, Brady went by the name in New Hampshire. His radio name was Parish Hall. Parish Hall. Parish Hall. <laughs> that was his name. <laughs> <laughs> and um and, and he's from bob the late bob kennedy uh, parish hall was from springfield and so i stayed at his house the night before i went for an audition and uh became very close with his family and 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 they were a big part of my life so uh and bob and uh, uh you know was just a, a character and just a good guy to know because he did nights he was what six to ten I want to yeah, say six. He did six to ten. Then he did. Uh, then he did during days. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And Larry, no, Larry Kruger was on the mornings. Yeah. At one point, Larry was, you know, such a long time ago. So I'm not sure who remembers who and all that stuff. But Larry Kruger is, was one of the uh, nicest people on the planet that I ever met in my life. And uh, I remember it sounds really corny to say, but. When I when when he, when he left us on the, on this earth, I sent his wife a note, and I said every day that I spent and I spent time with Larry, my day was a better day if I spent time with him. And yeah. that's the kind of guy I was. And there were other guys like that too. You know, he's one guy. Uh, you know, it, it was just a very special time. Yeah, and and a very special place in, indeed. And uh, yeah. you know, then the, the radio broke off and and went downtown in the seventies, and TV was on its own, and that's yeah. when WHYN became WGGB. But you know, you, you think of it then, I mean, you know, the kids that were on the Admiral and Swabby show uh, or yeah. Bozo and, you know, Barbara, of course, Barbara Bernard, uh, who uh, yeah. uh, just a, a beautiful, beautiful lady. And, uh, you know, all those folks, I mean, it was yeah. just, it was a fun time. You know what? I, I look back on those, those days that the fact that, um, you know, we all had a pretty good idea of what we were doing, but, you know, ratings weren't as huge as they are now. And you could, you know, if you had an idea to do something, you could just do it. Yep. Yep. Yeah, although, you know, Dave, I have to say, if I'm being totally honest, thinking back, yeah, it was fun to be on the big 56. And the interesting thing was at one period of time, it wasn't cool to admit that you listened to the big 56, you know, you were cool if you're listening to some alternative or heavy rock or something, but we yeah. had huge numbers. And, and the one story that I thought of it today, uh, Fred King and I went over to Hamden Ponds in the summertime on a hot August day. And it <laughs> was a, um, we were doing a Motown weekend and, you know, everybody said, Oh, well, I'll listen to H Y N, you know, it, it, that's not the cool station. Well, we go to Hamden Ponds and we go on the beach and everybody on that beach had the big 56 on. And I remember turning to Fred and saying, you know, and you probably have the same thing, Dave. I don't think when you go and you don't think about the numbers of people that you're watching, right? You're going in to do a job. And you don't think of it every day. It's just, I got to go in. I got to keep the boss happy. Hope he doesn't call me and tell me that I did a bad job. And, and I hope I didn't make a fool of myself. And maybe I made somebody laugh, or maybe they liked the tune that I played, you know. But it was you didn't think about all oh, the big fifty. It was you just did it. You went to work just like just like a carpenter goes into work sure. to build but, a house. And that sounds corny as heck, but it's true. 
It is. Well, the other thing you guys did too was you used to have these huge events up at Mountain Park. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, like it. yeah. Where you'd have thousands of people. Well, the first time they did it, I was there the first time they did it. I forget the exact year, but maybe 68 or nine, I don't know. And um, they said they were going to have free rides in Mountain Park. And we went and uh, they had 30,000 people. They had to close the access road. I mean, they didn't realize, we, they didn't expect that. Amount of, I mean, it was mobbed. And, and, and uh, there was a guy by the name of Ken Caperso, who was the music director, who knew a lot of people in music and he knew the cow cells. And so the cow cells came and um, sang, that was when they had their hits. They Matter were huge fact, then, yeah. Yeah, the first, the day I auditioned at, at HYN, uh, I was staying at the Ken at uh, Bob Kennedy uh, uh, O'Brady's house, and uh, uh, the, the radio came on. I had to get up to go for an audition. And the rain, the park, and other things was playing by the cow cells. So that was the that was the, the time of it, I guess. And then I can remember. It sounds weird to say people were asking us for our autographs, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember turning to to O'Brady. And saying, wow, this is silly. What do they want our autograph for? And he goes, Yeah, I know. I guess we gotta do this because it looks we're supposed to be we're supposed to be big, big radio local stars. And go, yeah, I guess so. So we and I remember thinking, this is really silly, you know, and but that's ex that's exactly how we felt. And it wasn't it, you know, it it might have been a bigger deal to people on the outside than it was when you're doing it. Maybe that's it. I, I'm not yeah. really sure, but well, I, you look back on it too. It's it's, it, and, you, and you kind of understand it now. I mean, I, I always I had a hard time with that. I was always embarrassed when somebody asked for an autograph, and I'd be more than willing to give it. But it, you know, I was thinking the same thing. It's like, why would you want that? You know, it's, yeah, what's the big deal? You're just, not going to make yeah, any money yeah. on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it's, I think it, 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 it's this contact with us, yeah, and yeah. and I, you know, I, but I also think that's the other part of the success too, Dennis. Is that yes, you could hear you on the radio and everything else like that, but. You could also see you in person. I mean, you know, when you think of the days it, 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 in, in still at 1300 Liberty Street, you know, there was the friendlies. There was all these things across the street and you would go there for lunch or whatever else. And, and you were you were in the in the community all the time. Actually, Dave, I have to say as much as it was neat to be on the big 56 and be through that whole thing, working at HMP, to be honest with you, was in a way, in a way, more satisfying because we did all kinds of local things and we like raising money for the Jimmy fund. Right. Yep. Uh, I can't tell you the number of things we raised money for promoted. And that was, you know, that was wonderful. And, and Northampton area being smaller, you'd see people and, and you really had the, the feeling that you were doing something, you know, you, uh, you were making a difference. Yeah. And, and, to me, that was a big thing, you know, that you could raise money, you could use your microphone for, uh, uh, we did, uh, and I think you probably did too, for the Jimmy Fund, I don't know yeah. if you did one of those things. I worked with Ken Coleman, you know, I here he is, he's a big, you know, Boston radio personality, and we, 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 that was neat. But I had left... Out. I had, I actually, I, I was I was at 22 at the time, and, and Joe Fennessy called me, and he said, listen, we're doing a radio telethon. Uh, with with uh, for the Jimmy Fund, and we're going to do it at the Hampshire Mall, and it's going to be Ken Coleman and John Miller. Yeah. Remember John for a yeah, short period of time great, in the Red great. Sox. Yeah, great. And uh, so they they asked me to come up and be part of it, and if, you know, of course, I mean, you know, the Jimmy Fund, absolutely. And uh, I can remember John Miller, and, and at the time they're saying they they weren't making a lot of money, and. Uh, and, and John Miller started on his impersonations of Vin Scully and all the rest of them like that. And he looked at me, he says, I am so sorry. He said, I'm taking up all the airtime. I said, are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> and they were all of, town. But they were all very, very nice. You know, you go to work with somebody that's a, a Boston radio personality and you think, gee, uh, you know, uh, I'll be happy just to sit here. And boy, this is fun to work with a guy that is a, is a, and then he, he just, he just was a regular guy. Ken was, I, I'll tell you a, a quick Ken Coleman story. We had a bus trip to Fenway park and for contest winners or something. And I went along on the bus and a couple of the salespeople and I called Ken the 
day or week before. And I said, Ken, we have a bunch of people uh, from that are coming to the game. Is there any chance of you just when you're going up to the booth before the game, just stopping by? Cause you know, for people that are Red Sox fans, that's really something. And sure enough, but seven a quarter after seven, I see this guy coming, you know, dressed pretty sharp and all these people from, from Northampton, East Hampton, Westfield, whatever it was, you know, sitting there and, and uh, introduced, here's Ken Coleman. And he talked to people for 10 minutes and, you know, for them, that was it. I got a kick out of it. Not for me, but for them. I mean, they were th so thrilled that he would be kind enough to do that. And of course our connection was a Jimmy fun. So I asked him and, I didn't know if he'd do it. He may, I thought maybe he'd laugh at me and say, I'm not going to bother doing that. I'm busy, but he, he showed up. So once again, nice to be around nice people, Dave. Well, he was, he was the executive director of the Jimmy Fund for the longest yep. time, too. And, yep. you know, in, in, in any of us who grew up around here, I mean, if you think of 1967 and, uh, you know, the impossible dream year, and one of the voices on that was Ken Coleman with Ned yep. Martin. And yep. then Ken, Ken came back in the late seventies and, and hooked up with Joe Castiglione. And, and my God, Joe is still, Joe is the longest running Red Sox broadcaster in, in history. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, but all, all good people and, uh, you know, great family people. And yeah, uh, I, I got a big kick out of, um, I got a phone ringing here, but I don't care. Um, I hope it's not a bill collector. It's probably a scam call. I've been getting oh, a lot of those. Always is. Yeah. You know, they, you know, somebody, but anyway, uh, uh, for the extended warranty on your car. Yeah. No, oh, they drive you crazy. Right. <laughs> yeah. Or they say they're from their, their computer. Right. And uh, I do hope it's nobody saying something bad so you can hear this, but. Oh, this is from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Dave. Oh, that's a, actually there's a, there's, they're sending something out tonight. We got one here about, uh, you know, stay home, stay safe over the holidays. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. What? I don't, I actually don't get a lot of phone calls and I, I was going to unhook the phone. And I said, nah, no one's going to call. Well, no, you know. always. So let's talk you know, about HMP. How did you wind up there? Um, I left, I was working, I worked at HYN and then I worked at MAS and then, uh, then I worked at SPR, you know, back in those days, people stayed uh, for short periods of time, but I was at, I was at, uh, HYN for six years and I was at SPR, I think for four or something like that. Then they had an ownership change and it was time to go somewhere else. And I remember looking just to go for a place. And I figured, you know, I probably will only be there. Ah, you know, gee, it's a smaller than the a little smaller than the Springfield market, and I probably won't be there that long. Well, ended up being 23 years, and it, it, it was really wonderful. I mean, it, it really felt like it was it was doing something, Dave. I, I, I once again, it wasn't being on the radio is not a cure for cancer. You know, I'm not saying that, but it was. You just felt like you were doing doing something and, and people cared and they, they listened and it was just, it, it was a pretty good experience. And once again, we work with great people. I got to mention, and you would know the person once again, this is a little in radio, but there's a lady uh, by that works in, uh, in HMP. Her name is Barbara Kushka. She's the traffic person. Okay. This is a now, lady. I knew Barbara who, when she was Barbara Johnson. I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> she, she, the interesting thing is there's a lady, I should probably explain to people, a traffic person is the person that puts commercials onto the program. She schedules commercials. Yeah. Schedules commercials. And it's a very tough job because the salesmen want to get their clients on and the guys that are so-called talents want to do less work. And so well, she's, she's a traffic cop with salespeople. Yeah. Let's face it. But she loves <laughs> radio. I yeah. mean, most people just worked in, a, you know, she loved radio. You could, she could sing to you jingles, you know, an, an HYN jingle or uh, some other jingle. She, and she listened to it like crazy. And they just dedicated last year a studio to her. You know, well, she's, one she's of, been there. She started, she started the same year I did, 1970. Yeah. So she's yeah. been there and, 50 years. Yeah. You know, once again, another example of just a really special person. And, uh, well, you, you know, know, people don't know on the outside what's going on on the inside, but an important person. Well, she does. She's, you know, she's one of those people. It's like without her, that place doesn't run. And, and that's <laughs> what it comes down to. 
It's, she knows where everything's buried and all the good stories and all the bad stories. And well, she also remembers the days at 78 Main Street on the fifth floor. So that was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How oh, long sorry. did you work? How long did you work at the HMP? HMP? Uh, now my phone's ringing. Jeez, look at that. Uh, <laughs> just... I was at HMP for all, about 10 years. I started when I was 19 in 1970. And, and uh, it, you know, I, it, long story short, but I, I, I was looking to make some extra money. So I started working at 22 doing audio and, uh, and camera. And uh, in 79, just out of the blue, I got a call that they, they were thinking of a news anchor, looking for a news anchor. And because um, uh, Tom Colton had retired and there was a, another guy there, Jack, uh, and I can't think of his last name, but um and he had left and went to Hawaii that much. I remember. And they thought I could do this. And um, so I went down and I auditioned and uh, I auditioned with Quill and uh, I got the job and I wasn't looking to leave HMP. And I remember the day I, I had to go in to tell Joe, Joe Fennessy that, that I was leaving. And you guys were close. I know you we were very you close. Were very close. Yeah. It, yeah. it broke my heart. I mean, you know, I, I think of my days at HMP, you know, that when I was there, I met, I met my wife, Linda, who was going to do Cooley Dickinson Hospital School of Nursing. Uh, our son, Chris, was born. I mean, we were a family. You know, our best friend, you know, Gary Miller and Glenn Cardinal. And, uh, and, and that they were all, we were all so close. Yeah. And it was, it was like a part of my life was going to end. And, and I, was, I was scared to death. Um, you know, but I, I, you know, I, it was one of those career moves. I knew I had to make it and, yep. you know, and lucky enough for the fact that I didn't have to leave the area. So, uh, I think you've been, you know, I was thinking of this as we were getting set up, uh, I was thinking, well, you were lucky and I'm from Connecticut originally. And my first job was in Berlin, New Hampshire. Okay. And then I worked at a couple of stations in New Hampshire and I came to, to Springfield. You were, you were incredibly fortunate to have the talent and or the makeup or what, whatever it is that makes who we are to be able to be in your hometown or hometown area. Yeah. I mean, that that's, and Ray, Ray Herschel, the same Ray's thing. The same thing. That, I mean, Ray, Ray and I are kind of parallel Jack, with that. Jack O'Neill, yeah, same yeah. thing. That's a wonderful thing to be able to do. I don't know whether everybody, you know, maybe, maybe you probably, you probably do appreciate it. I don't know if everybody does. You know, sometimes people want to go. You never like your hometown. You know, that is everybody yeah. likes your town, but you, it's your hometown. But you but, go to appreciate it. And it, you know, you know I, I, yeah, I think it's very special. I think you were lucky and, and I'm sure you appreciate it. And, you know, we, we talk about Jack. I, I, a quick story with Jack because Jack had left HYN. And uh, actually, he was with still H HYN radio, but had left TV. So he started doing some part time sports over at 22. And I remember the first time Jack came into the studio and to do the sports and he walks in and I said, Jack, where's your script? I don't need a script. <laughs> Jack never had a script. It, it was all up here. He could do it. He could do life. anything. And, and, and if he couldn't do it, he'd fake it and you wouldn't know the difference. Wouldn't know the difference. And you Jack, would, saying? Jack would say, because, you know, newscasters, on TV, they would hold pens in their hands. He said, yeah. what do you got a pen in your hand for? He said, you got to write a note. Yeah. I said, no, he said, then don't hold it like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were, we were, we were good friends and he was very talented. And uh, it, like he said, he was, he was a good person too, which means more to me than, than the radio talent or the TV talent. That's great. And then, then yeah. we did, we did the St. Patrick's parade with him. And oh, uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I remember it was the first year of Beth and Jack, Beth Carroll and Jack were doing the booth stuff. And I was out on the, out on the street. And so Jack said, well, we need to meet to talk about what we're going to do and everything else. And Jack says, he hands us a, a, a portfolio, you know, a, a binder. Yeah, he yeah. says, this has got all the information you need in it. So I open up the binder and it just had names of groups. That's it. Yeah. I said, well, Jack, where's the explanation? He said, it's all up here. Yeah. yeah. And Jack had it all up there. I mean, he Jack, Jack knew everybody. And, uh, yeah. You know, it was, uh, it, it, you know, it, I look back on that to be able to have the opportunity and the same thing with you is to be able to work with people like that uh, yeah. because they just don't make them like that anymore. Yep. Yep. But, you know, well, the, the HMP years too, I think, you know, part of it, and you touched on this, Dennis, was the fact that wherever you've been, and I, and, and I think this is, this has a lot to do with your success is you've always been active in the community. It's not, it's not just, you didn't go in and do your job on the air. You did stuff in the community all the time. 
Well, that that's true, Dave. And I think we're, we both feel the same way. I know you've always felt that way. Uh, I was working at, at HMP. And when I went on mornings, I originally worked afternoon for a year. And then I ended up doing mornings. And uh, I remember thinking I was living in West Springfield. And I said, no, I got to move up there. I said, you know, I, first of all, I don't want to drive up at five o'clock in the morning in a winter, you know, on 91. You just can't do that. I can't do that. You know, I got to be close. But I said, I'm going to get involved. And the interesting thing is the guys that worked there at the time, I think, thought that I it was an ego thing because I got involved. And I, I, I told them, I said, no, it's not that. I said, I live here. You know, I mean. I live here, so I want to be involved. I, what's the point of just be doing a radio show and going home and coming back the next day? You're not you're not connected. And so the things that that uh, I'm sure you did when you were on the air uh, and have done and I've done, you know, I, I, I talk about things. I went to a, or an event or something, a fundraiser, and you talk about it the next day on the air because you were there. Yep. And you could you could say, you know, why did they do this fundraiser for the Red Cross? Well, gee, last night I heard a story about this guy that saved this family that needed wood chopped down or something, you know, during during a, a flood. And and next day on the air, you could talk about it. And you can't do that if you just go home. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, it's nice to go home, but it's also nice to be in the community. You know, the sad thing now is, is, is you look at it about radio. And I mean, we, you know, we grew up on radio and in local radio where everything was live is that there's, there's only a handful of stations doing that now. And that, that to me is, is so sad because I, I, to me, there's, there is still a huge place for radio. Yeah, I, I think so. I think it's a, a loss. It, it's a loss in the community, uh, plain and simple. It's just, uh, I mean, everything changes. We know that. And it's, things are more corporate. Well, I think Dave, if we want to talk about radio, they 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 did away with uh, you know the way the government said you could buy stations. So and then yeah. you have people buying blocks of stations. So that's what happens. And they then they're looking at the profits, and you know, we're, and it's just different than we, when we were there. You know. So well, not, I think the other part of it is too. It's 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 in most instances broadcasters don't own them. It's 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 corporations who are who are looking to make a profit yep yep you know yep. i think that's that's where we've kind of lost i mean because you know you think back in the day uh you could own 7 a.m 7 fm and 7 tv stations and but i mean even in this market you couldn't own two stations in a market because i know at one point in time uh charlie uh, Char charlie derose's dad uh who started hyn and who started hmp um, that you couldn't own two, you know, in, in two separate communities like that. Because a lot of people don't remember that WHYN was originally at fourteen hundred on the dial, and when uh, when the when uh, Charlie DeRose went down and he seesaw five sixty and went to that end of the dial, fourteen hundred opened up, and that's when HMP was started. I saw a picture the other day, and I've never seen this picture because it, it, when we were on Main Street, there was a there was a sign on the Nonotuck Building at WHMP. And it had all, I had always seen that one. I saw one the other day that had WHYN. Hmm. And uh, I mean, so, you know, Dennis, when you, when you think about it that way, it's like you really came kind of full circle. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. I never, I, I never knew about the 1400 and HYN. I never heard that story, Dave. Thank yeah, you. And, and it's, <laughs> it's uh, you know, so you, you think about it there and, you know, but now it doesn't make any difference. I mean, you can own hundreds of, of radio stations and, you know, here, here, we, here we are. It's, uh, but you know, the nice part of it is, uh, uh, was it WEIB in, in Northampton? Uh, WARE, Bruce Marshall, uh, uh, Phil, uh, Phil Drumheller's got his station up in, uh, up, up in, up in uh, Franklin County. Yeah. There's, there's, there's some small stations making a comeback and, and doing well. Yeah. It's, uh, it's something to be said for local radio. I mean, there's definitely is, but think, but things change, you know, yeah. and, that's just the way it is. And I guess you just have to kind of think of the, like we're having a conversation now. This is a feel good conversation. You know, yeah. uh, we would have, if I ran into you somewhere, we would have a uh, conversation. If it was at an event, we would have this conversation. Probably a lot of the things we're talking about now, because I think that's basically what we feel. 
you know, yep. no, and, you know, that's the nice thing about podcasts is we can do something like this. It's uh, so after you left HMP, you stayed in Northampton and uh, you, you've been keeping busy. Well, maybe not busy enough. Dave, you know? <laughs> I tell you, uh, I do some yearbook photography, photography for a company. Uh, but now because of the virus, uh, there's, you know, fewer sports. Normally, I would do basketball. I, I did. I did soccer and I did uh, lacrosse in the fall. I don't think that. I'm not sure. There may not be any basketball. I think I read somewhere. You may know this more than I do. I think they're saying that um, maybe they're allowed to have swim meets because they're not close together. Yeah. So maybe I'll do that. And uh, you know, it's uh, it's just a different time and. Uh, we move along until some guy from the TV station says, I want you to be in a podcast. And I say, sure. When do you want me? As I said to you in an email, hey, thank you, Dave, for inviting me, because at least it gave me a reason to shave. Because well, these days, <laughs> hey, thank you, because these days, you know, I, I don't use many blades because I'm not going anywhere. So who cares? You know, <laughs> you know, it is. I mean, I think COVID-19 is, 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 if nothing else, it's proven to us that our lives can be a lot simpler. And it's, it's not all that bad. Yeah. Yep. You know, it really is that, I, you know, and I look at it, you know, you were talking about high school stuff and it's like, you know, uh, what we used to do there with uh, uh, one of the first things I, I can remember when I first started there, I, I started at HMP and I was working Saturday afternoons. I had one shift and it was in the fall and they were doing high school football and, and Gary Miller had just started there and Gary was doing high school football with Joe because his longtime color guy, Don Ransom had left and, and he had done, he had done it with Don for years. So, Joe said to me, he said, hey, what do you know about high school basketball? And I said, well, you know, I know high school basketball. Would, would you like to do color with me? Yeah. And I, so I said, sure. Now, I didn't know squat about high school basketball, but the other part of it was it paid $10 a game, and I really needed the money. I guess. I guess. You. <laughs> Dave, should I tell the story that I, I told you on the phone back a few weeks ago that uh, Joe Fennessy, who was a station manager, who was not – uh, usually one to give a lot of compliments, but he was very fair and a really good guy, but he, yep. he just didn't give compliments. That was not his, 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 the way he lived his life, but he was a great, he was a great guy. Right. And then one day we're talking in the studio and I don't know how it came up. And he said to me, you know, you and Dave, and I said, Dave, Dave Matson, yeah, Dave, you and Dave are the only two guys that I know that really liked what you did. And I said, well, and I said to Joe with a kind of a semi twinkle in my eye, Joe, is that a compliment? And he kind of semi blushed and said, yeah, I know I don't give compliments. I said, that's all right. I said, but I'm going to take that as a compliment because I, I think Dave is a really good guy. And I said, I think we both kind of feel the same way about the business. And I think we do kind of about, about you know, I, I community think and, and all that whole thing. And so I, you know, I, I was... That could, for me, that was a compliment from him, but it was a compliment to be compared to you. So well, uh, thank you. That, that I, meant I, a lot I, to me. And, and, and it goes right back at you. You know, the other, we'd be remiss if we talk about Joe Fennessy, but talking about our buddy Tommy Hennessy. Oh, nobody uh, like him on the planet. No, no. And Tommy uh, left us too soon, but Tommy was, uh, I mean, he, he, was, he became the heart and soul of that radio station, and yep. uh, he, he died way too young. Yeah. Um, nobody like him. Dave, nobody like him, Dave, on the planet. I, and I really mean that. Here was a guy, folks, if you don't know him, he you couldn't stay mad at the guy. You could not. You'd go in, when he was a station manager, you'd go into his office and you'd be mad about something and you'd come out laughing. And then you'd say, why am I laughing? I'm I'm supposed to be angry. And he just. Another guy I should mention, Dave, because if somebody watches this, they probably know the name Andy Warnes. Andy Warnes, yeah, right. Who did the Polka Show? Yeah. Who was a really good guy? Uh, Again, a another, local guy. What? A local guy. Yeah, from, yeah. From but, South but Deerfield. Really, there's another guy, real a real gentleman, and and another reason to just feel good when you think about people that you've known. Well, it's, you know, that, that, and I think that's the fortunate part for, for us is that we had a chance to work with these people. And, and you know, I, uh, the one thing I, you know, I'll, I'll say something. Well, a, a, a good example with Joe is that I would say, um, I hear people say daylight savings time and it drives me crazy. 
I said, no, it's daylight saving time. And the one who corrected me on that was Joe Fennessy. And I never made that mistake again, yep. but they were stickler for detail. And, and as, it, as we go through a career, you know, we'll, we might say something or do something and then it, it comes back to us. It's like, well, that's where that came from a Joe Fennessy or a Durham Caldwell or for me, a Keith silver or, or people like that, that there's yep. a little part of them in us. Yeah. Which is a nice thing. And it makes you think of them, which is a, it which does. is a good thing. Right. You know, and, and hopefully to be able to impart what they taught us to other people that we work with. And that's, you know, that's always been the thing. But, you know, two lucky guys, Dennis, uh, my goodness, I'm, I'm, I'm getting the Zoom flash that we should probably. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> I, I appreciate the time, Dave. I obviously enjoyed it. Uh, uh, Dennis, it's always good talking with you. It, it really is. And, you know, it's, uh, it, it, you know, because I, I, I know you were a part of people's lives for so many years, whether at HYN or, or uh or WHMP. And I think people like to see and hear what you're doing now. And, and I'm glad we could do this. We'll have to do this again. My thanks to Dennis Lee for joining me for this week's Even Better Western Mass podcast. Thanks for watching or listening. Wherever you are, stay safe, stay well. And if you can, join me next week.